Hello and welcome. I'm Rafa and this is the first time I actually do a tutorial like this in a video format. So please, if it's not perfect, forgive me. And today I like to try to show you a little bit about visual effects made in Godot. I will put all the files that you need to recreate this project onto GitHub. You will find the link in the description of this video. So uh, if you want to try it out to recreate it, um, you can find everything there. So let's jump right into making it. I just used a little sprite of a cup of hot chocolate from my game Bottomless. And I will try to make it interesting by adding different kind of effects. So let's start by adding a particle to denote. Um, I make a new material here. To have animated particles, um, you can check this option here and then set up the sprite sheet as you need it. You need to drag the texture in and then you can already see right now it's on the first frame. And if you then set up the particle material accordingly, you can just let it run the animation over and over. Depending on the time, the lifetime of the particle, the whole sprite sheet will basically run one time. Now here I randomized the angle a little bit to make it more interesting. This sprite sheet was made in Blender. Uh, I will also add the Blender file to the GitHub repo. So you can find and download it there and, and experiment in Blender. Increasing the emission shape size to make it um, a bit bigger and make it a bit more random. I will also change the direction to a spread of 180, meaning basically it's emitting in 360 degrees from the emitter center and increase the velocity a little bit and you can already see how the particles emit away from the center. And there I inverted the gravity. It looks a bit more magical <laughs> and I really like the effect. So yeah, you can experiment a little bit with lifetime. Shorter lifetime gives a more intense effect and longer lifetimes give a more calm effect. So just position it behind the sprite and it already looks kind of interesting. Experiment around with particle systems like this to, for example, make items appear more interesting, to have effects on characters. A color gradient basically means this color will change over the lifetime of each particle. So I will add some violet to the start of the particle, a little bit of magenta to the center of the particle and another interesting color to the end. Playing around with the colors in the gradient can really make a particle system much more interesting. You can see how it looks now much more alive than before. Have a look out that the colors in the middle are not too bright, otherwise it will look a bit strange. You can see now by turning it down, by making it a little bit, little bit more dark, it looks uh, much more um, natural and the gradient is much smoother. What also works really well is adding a little bit of hue variation to a particle system. So each particle has a slightly different color um, play around with the values here to see how it um, affects your particle system, but it can make it look much more interesting and much more alive. It's just a, a subtle change, but it will really get you far. You can also add a little bit of explosiveness. If you turn up explosiveness to one, it will emit all the particles each cycle. But if you put it at like uh, 0.2 or something like that, it will just uh, make it a little bit more random and the emission looks a bit more interesting. So let's make a new example. Let's add another particle 2D. This time I use the offset texture that is also supplied in the repo. And by using a texture that had a slight offset to the center, you can get uh, really interesting effects in a very short amount of time and it just makes the particle system more alive if you apply an angular motion to it. First, set the angle to 360 and the randomness to one, meaning that each particle is spawned in a random angle. I will also decrease the size a little bit. Under angular velocity, you can set up how fast the particles spin. You can already see that gives a really interesting effect if combined with a random or with uh, a curve. So particles are spinning less in the beginning and more to the end. From the offset of the texture, it looks like a slight turbulence. I reverse the gravity and you can see how the particles just disappear when they die. This is because the color is consistent. If you use one texture that has no animation or anything, it will just be one color over the lifetime of a particle. So we have to add a gradient 
You can see I play around with the scale a little bit to make the particles smaller when they start to disappear. And with the gradient you can really make the whole animation a lot more smooth. You can now see they fade out when they reach their life cycle end. Now I just play around with the color a little bit to match my personal taste. And one thing that is really interesting is if you go to raw mode on colors and increase the amount to more than one, you can see that it already gets much more intense. And if you use a post-process node with glow, it will also add um, the glow effect to this particle system or to the... I will just uh, put them more to the top so it looks a little bit like the hot chocolate is magical <laughs> and it comes out of the cup. One important thing is when you use textures that have an offset that they will never spawn at the center. That's a little bit of a problem, um, but you can counter that by decreasing the scale in the beginning of the particle using a curve. So it will be a little bit smaller and so it will look more like coming from a center. And you can see that effect much more or much better if you increase the emission amount. It looks almost like a circle because all those textures are offset from center. Changing um, the emission shape to a sphere with a slight radius will make that a little bit better. Let's make another example and add another particle 2D node. And this time I will show you how to use a texture that has a random frame for each particle. So to do that you need a sprite sheet with multiple sprites or multiple frames. You add a canvas material and enable particle animation. And you can see now it always uses the first frame. I disable gravity because it looks really strange. Now in animation there's the offset parameter. This offset parameter basically tells which frame of the sprite sheet the particle will use. If we randomize this, it will always use one of those frames. Using a gradient texture for the color, we can make the transition smooth. The kind of effect that I'm going for, it, it's kind of like speed lines almost, or um, divine shine around the object. But it's a very cool effect, it's very simple. We can randomize the angle, the spawn angle, and the scale a little bit. And if we change the scale over the lifetime, <clears throat> it just flows outward and it looks pretty cool. You can see um, the effect looks a bit strange if you l use a low amount. And I would always advise for such effects to use local coordinates. If you use world coordinates um, and you move the object, it will start to look really strange. Yeah, you can add a little hue variation. It starts to look really funny with that. Yeah, and I think I would call that one done. Let's make another example. And this time I use a texture that looks a bit like a vortex. You can see that I always uh, use add mode. Um, that's because the textures have no alpha. I realized that when making this video. So I will add versions with alpha from those textures to the repo. So you can also use it in mix mode or subtraction mode. Now with just um, adding an angular velocity, you can already see the effect that I'm going for. Just reduce the scale to the end and you kind of have a vortex effect. Um, it looks like it's pulling to the center and adding an angular randomness to the spawn and it already looks really interesting. You can also see sometimes it's good to reduce the emission amount so you can really see what's going on and sure also add a gradient uh, otherwise it will just pop out and now it really starts to look very smooth and kind of windy. We can increase the particle emission amount again and I really like the effect already. If you use a gradient in the color slot, um, I usually try to stay black and white and so you can just use the color modulation of the node to change its color. And it will basically just modulate the color that you set up in the, in the gradient slot of the particle system. And it looks especially interesting if you go over one, like I already said, you can get very cool effects, like um, almost like a fiery effect, because the, the single particles always add up and then you get very intense colors. So let's create one more example. Um, this time I will use more textures in add mode to add um, a lens flare like effect. Just add a material, set it to add mode, and uh, there you go, basically. <laughs> then you can just adjust values and play around with color, with scale, 
to get a nice looking effect. And I will also show you how to add a very simple little script to make it more interesting, more alive. So I changed the texture out here because the original was a bit too boring. But I used the original texture in front to just um, make it a little bit more interesting and um, integrate the artwork better into the effect. Um, I selected both nodes and then changed around the, the color. So I can change color on both objects at the same time. That's very practical for making such effects. I just take the particle system of another example, move it to the place where I need it. And you can already see how combining different effects um, gets very interesting very fast and play around a little bit with the color. But I want to go for something different here. Let's make it sparkly. I'm just using one of the other textures supplied in the package. I will change around the emission shape to a box shape. Uh, right now it's a little hard to see what's going on. Um, I reduced the gravity to zero, um, reduced the scale of the sprite or of the particle. And you can already see, now it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. I add another gradient texture to stop the popping in and out of the texture. Now I added a curve to the scale property to fade in and out really smoothly, but it's still hard to see. The box is a little bit small. Let's make it bigger. And you can see the sparkly effect that I was going for. The color is a bit strange. It doesn't really fit very well. So let's um, change that too. Going a bit more for a brighter look and it already looks much more sparkly. So now it already looks a bit interesting. We have different examples. But um, you can see that the glow looks a bit boring without any movement compared to the other examples. So let's just go forward and add a little script there. <clears throat> so let's make a new little script for that effect. Let's make a new variable called time. We will use that to basically create a loop that will change the scale of the object that the script is attached to. So in the process function, I will take time and put it inside a wrap float and I will just take time and add delta to it and then wrap it between 0 and 1 meaning each time uh, time will be bigger than 1 it will go back to 0 so I can guarantee it will always stay between 0 and 1 now we take the scale of the object and set it to vector 1 we can also use the constant that is supplied by Godot. So vector2.1. And then I just realized uh, it will skip if I just use time. So we wrap time around minus pi and plus pi instead of 0 and 1. And that just should give us um, a slowly pulsing effect for that sprite. At the moment it's very intense and it's very slow. So let's add some variables there to give us some control over the effect. I will add a new export variable called power. So I can control the intensity of the effect. I have to multiply my uh, sine wave with the power. And um, I will change it up a little bit. I will add vector1 to vector1 and multiply the second vector1 with that time variable or with the sine wave basically. I will also add a speed variable so I have control over how fast um, the effect is appearing or is uh, changing the scale of the object. So let's play around with the variables here a bit and you can see that it works. And now it looks pretty interesting. Much more alive than before. Um, everyone should be able to do it or you can just take the script from the repo and use it in your project. <laughs> I want to be able to change the size of the sprite. So I have to save the original scale before I apply the effect. I could do that like this. Just add an original scale variable and set it in the ready function. Or I could just do it um, on the top. Say on ready, set the scale to the original scale. I can delete the ready function and uh, change that out. And now I can change the scale of the sprite to make it a little bit more interesting and the script will still respect that new scaling. I want to add another effect or another script and uh, that script will be basically rotating an object around its own axis over time. 
Basically, it's very similar to the other script. So I can just copy what I have, um, change what I need. If I want to rotate, I change scale to rotation for sure. I can just use time. I can delete the variables that I don't need. I will keep speed because that will be very useful to change the rotation speed of the object. And then the effect will look like this. So it's very easy. Um, you don't have a lot of setup to do. And a little tip, don't always overdo it. Sometimes it can look much better if it's a little bit subtle and not too intense. When I use that script on the normal node 2D, I will get an error saying, hey, the script extends sprite and not node 2D. But I can just change it to node 2D because sprite is also node 2D. So the script will now work on basically most 2D objects. The icon scales a little bit up and down and all of its childs, of course, so it can make for some interesting effect for an item or a pickup or something like that. And that's it. I hope this uh, will be useful for you. And if you liked uh, the video, subscribe my channel, even if I never post on it. <laughs> or join the Discord of my game and we can have a little chat about the techniques. And I hope the repo will be useful for you. Don't forget that um, you can download all the examples and all of the textures that I used um, down in the video description. Hope you have fun with it and maybe it will improve your projects a little bit. So, see you soon. Bye.